The Ribhu Gita. The Ribhu Gita forms the sixth section of the Sanskrit work known as Shiva Rahasya. It is the teachings of Lord Shiva in Mount Kailash to his devotee Ribhu, from whom the Gita derives its name. The essence of Ribhu Gita to Shiva Salutations to the Supreme Lord Shiva The pure awareness in the sky of consciousness in the heart by meditation on whom Ganesha Guha Mother Shakti who is the embodiment of Shiva's grace and myriads of devas, saints and devotees have attained their cherished goals. To Nataraja, from the sky of consciousness of the heart springs forth the dancer Nataraja with his blissful consort, freedom to the delegation of his devotees, who are thus liberated forever. Unto that Ananda, Natesa, we do render our devout salutations. To Artha, Nariswara, unto that form whose left half is the mother of all manifestation and whose right half is the father of the same. The jingle of the gems enclosed within the hollow golden anklet of whose foot is the source of all scriptures and whose three eyes, fire, sun and moon, are the illuminants of the universe. To that form be our devout salutations. May that divine form ever be our protection. To Shiva, Shakti, Vinayaka and Shanmukha. Salutations to Shiva, the Lord of the Universe of Infinite Power. To Sat, Chit, Ananda, Shakti, the Mother of the Universe. To Vinayaka, the dispeller of all impediments to freedom and to Shanmukti, the Satguru, who dispenses to his worthy devotees the divine wisdom of Shiva Self leading to salvation. The essence of Ribhu Gita the following verses constitute the teachings of Shiva to Ribhu, who in turn transmits those teachings to his disciple Nidarga Rishi. The treatise goes by the name Ribhu Gita. The universe was neither born nor maintained nor dissolved. This is the plain truth. The basic screen of pure being awareness stillness 
devoid of all the moving shadow pictures of name and form of the universe is the sole eternal existence. Some may argue that this universe of duality, multiple existences, is a factual second reality, clearly seen by the senses operated by the mind. But then, are the senses anything apart from the mind? Can they function without the support of the mind in which they are embedded? What is this mind except a bundle of thoughts? What are thoughts except evanescent ripples in the still limitless ocean of pure being awareness self which is the sole existence without a second The existence of the illusion of silver in the mother of pearl is not a reality apart from the reality of the mother of pearl, which is the basic reality. The illusion of the universe is based on the mind, which again is an illusion base on the still awareness being self. In the unitary, undifferentiated, still ocean of existence awareness self, body, senses, mind, intellect, and lives, embodied souls are nothing but evanescent ripples not apart from that soul self. The universe of name and form, the embodied creatures and their creator mind, desire, karma, action, and misery and everything other than the self are merely thought formations projected by the power of the self on its screen self. The state of firm abidance in that thought-free, alert, awareness self constitutes integral perfection, yoga, wisdom, moksha, sahaja samadhi, the state of Shiva and the state of Atma, Self, which scriptures proclaim by the title of Brahman.
there never was a mind nor any of its countless forms like world jivas etc there isn't the least doubt that all these are the form of the eternally undifferentiable supreme brahman self this is the truth the one who hears this great secret diligently and understands completely abides as brahman self greatness of videha mukta with all objective knowledge banished with no trace of thought or ni science with all the three states of waking dream and sleep wiped out with all thought of death and birth abolished and ever established in the spontaneous blissful state of brahman self the condition of the videha mukta cannot be conceived and much less expressed in words the continued repetition of i am self brahman constitutes the sole mantra japa leading to mukti liberation all other mantra japas connected with diverse gods should be firmly assured as they aim at mundane objectives other than the self all other mantra japas always entangle one inextricably in the bondage of worldly enjoyments only sat chit ananda self shiva and his worship on the eternal and infinite screen of sat chit ananda self shiva by his own power shakti is projected as the moving shadow picture of the universe in manifestation and into that again it is absorbed in dissolution all luminaries like sun moon fire stars and lightning derive their luminosity as a gracious gift from the shakti inherent in that screen of self shiva only though bright in themselves they can only obscure and cannot reveal the shiva screen that they cover up out of fear of that shiva 
their creator devas and asuras spirits of the upper and the nether worlds are ever alertly engaged in their ordained duties that shiva must be meditated upon and realized to be the self by making the restless mind to stay still and alert after it has been adequately restrained and completely prevented from the pursuit of sense objects namely the shadow pictures on the screen of the self all shadow pictures removed what remains is pure awareness the spotlessly effulgent screen thus shiva reveals himself spontaneously as the soul eternal sat chit ananda self the very essence of the nature of the worshiper the jivan mukta the jivan mukta is a person liberated during his lifetime who continues to have consciousness of the body and world along with his firm abidance in his shiva self he ever abides in the blissful peace of sat chit ananda he is poised rock firm in the conviction that he is not the body and that his being is the soul existence the soul alert awareness bliss of shiva self supreme the jivan mukta has his consciousness completely dissolved beyond recognition in his brahman self eternally alone in his self he is ever lost in the enjoyment of the bliss of his brahman self the videha mukta the videha mukta is free from the least trace of thought he abides all along in his effulgent pure awareness self in intense unbroken bliss totally oblivious of his body and environments in a state of maha mauna stillness of body speech and mind 
the term means the disembodied liberated person he is the matured liberated adept who while still alive abides as pure sat chit ananda self without awareness of body and the world around him he is the pure embodiment of sat chit ananda all pervasive as ether infinite as the sky all alert with awareness spontaneously abiding as the perfect brahman self in a state of still unbroken peaceful bliss there is not an atom apart from the self which is the integral undifferentiated perfection of whole being soul world and creator are impartible from the self the reality of these is the reality of the self only all ignorance and illusion all objects inert and living all beings and non beings all the five elements all the diverse worlds all bodies and the lives that arise in them not being apart from brahman self are brahman self only existence alone is for even non existence acquires meaning only in existence simply put everything exists always as brahman self only all objective knowledge all thought forms all visible objects all things heard all questions and answers all the food consumed and all other illusions not being apart from the self should be regarded as brahman self only therefore one should practice the habit of regarding everything as brahman self only until all thought of things other than the self is lost this condition once achieved one should not give room for any thought and should ever abide in maha maunam peace 
of total stillness. Anything seen as other than Brahman self is bound to cause fear and trouble. Therefore, it behoves one to stick to the single attitude that everything sensed is Brahman Self alone. In due course, even this one thought must be given up in order to abide firmly in the free, undisturbed, blissful state of the soul Brahman Self. The total discarding of the mind is alone victory, achievement, bliss, yoga, wisdom and liberation. The sacrifice of mind is, in fact, the totality of all sacred sacrifices. The firm denial of the existence of the mind and the firm belief in the existence of Brahman Self is the sure way to the conquest of mind leading to the experience of the soul effulgent self. If one gives the slightest room for the thought that the mind exists pure awareness itself will vibrate as the ruffled mind which is the parent of all trouble and illusion therefore one should ever abide in the conviction that there is no mind and that the pure awareness self is the sole existence. This is easy way to conquer the mind with all its vagaries. There is no such thing as the troublesome mind, no world of names and forms, not the least bit of ego. All these are nothing but the perfect Brahman Self, that I am. In this conviction, one should abide firmly until one achieves the state of sleepless sleep that is alert, peace, eternal. The true Samadhi, to hold on to the conviction born of self-inquiry that I am no doubt the screen, Brahman Self and 
the world picture their own though evanescent is no doubt i am self only and to abide still and blissful in that conviction is the acme of all sadhanas like divine worship charitable gifts spiritual austerities mantra japa and samadhi as well the self alone is the spontaneous self effulgent awareness that alone is eternal bliss that alone is existence everlasting that alone is all embracing perfection the soul godhead without a rival and the soul primordial stuff of the universe in the conviction born of this experience one should ever abide as the soul i am the supreme self sahaja samadhi remaining alertly aware and thought free with a still mind devoid of differentiation of self and non-self even while being engaged in the activities of worldly life is called the state of sahaj nirvikalpa samadhi the natural state of abidance in the self when all differentiation has ceased this is called akanda akara vritti the i of infinite perfection as contrasted with the i and the body notion of those who have not realized the self maturing of sahaja samadhi abidance in sahaja samadhi is the hallmark of jivan mukti with the progressive development of this state the intensity of blissful peace is attained leading on to the four successive stages of perfection in mukti nothing short of this technique of self inquiry will be of any avail in destroying the fearsome cycle of birth and death realized person who abides in the brahman self and has lost all feelings of differentiation of self and non-self is the jnani or mukta purusha such a jnani is rare to find through searching among millions of people if one has the lucky opportunity 
of getting his darshan, personal view and contact, one attains purification from all his sins and what is more, such a person's ego gets well set on the road to its liquidation. Darshan of the matured jnani constitutes the acme of purification of baths taken in sacred waters, divine worship, mantra japa, spiritual austerities, charitable acts, and devotional worship of Lord Shiva himself. To find and to gain access to the sacred presence of such a jnani is the luckiest of opportunities that one could ever obtain in this world. Worshipful service rendered unto such a jnani, Satguru, quickens one's spiritual wisdom to attain the bliss of Jivan Mukti. If continued further, it bestows on the disciple even the status of Videha Mukti. Therefore, if one is keen on being released from bondage into the freedom of Mukti, the one in fallible means of achieving that aim is the loving and worshipful service of the Jnani Satguru. Firmly established in the self, undisturbed by the least ripple of thought, still as an effigy of stone or wood, dissolved completely in Brahman self, even as water and milk, with awareness devoid of all impurities of thought and drowsiness standing clear as the pure sky, the grandeur of the Jnani's Nishta, form stands in the self, defies thought and expression. The sin qua non of Mukti is Shiva's grace, that in which the whole universe is born and into which it is absorbed in the evolution is the Shiva self, devoted worship of and meditation on that Shiva Self of pure consciousness alone will attract Shiva's grace, which is indispensable for liberation. Those engaged in the pursuit of knowledge of the Brahman Self happening to get involved in mundane 
pleasures like sex should regard such pleasures as merely faint shadows of the bliss of the self they should never even dream of worldly pleasures as the self is sat meditative contact with the self is the true satsanga association with sadhus who abide in being self as a brahman self is the highest association with the self is mahat sangha highest association the sadhaka practicing meditation on the self should always think formally that all diversities of soul world and creator are the undifferentiated brahman self only by practice his consciousness is freed from thoughts after which he should give up the above thought also and abide always in the thought free state of the self abidance in the state of thought free alert awareness is the state of mukti beyond thought and expression the emergence of thought is the bondage on untold suffering abidance in the self is the true non-dual samadhi and that alone could lead one to the eternal bliss of mukti the great illusions maya associated with god ishvara avidya associated with individual souls mind and jivas souls world and its creator all names and forms and all mental conceptions are nothing but the self one should ever abide in this conviction all worlds and creatures are only thought forms they are nothing but the mind which is a bundle of thoughts which again are nothing more than ripples in the still ocean of awareness self and certainly nothing apart from the self therefore one should abide in the firm conviction that all objects are only i am self brahman
there are no such things as achieved objectives and the efforts leading to them association with the wise or the ignorant efforts of learning and knowledge acquired acts of inquiry and practice the learner or the learned and any goals achieved what exists is only brahman the effulgent awareness self one should be firm in the conviction that there are no charitable acts sacred waters and shetras pilgrim centers no loss or gain and no loser or gainer no karma bhakti and wisdom and no knower or known all these thought forms are bound to be dissolved and lost in the brahman self which is the soul existence the bhavana which means faith based on the word of the teacher and the scriptures and in the unremitting abidance in the belief thereof thus the bhavana i am brahman self swiftly takes one to mukti as the continued reading of the texts generating that bhavana takes the aspirant unerringly to the goal he should always dwell on the written words dealing with the brahman self the illusion that one is the body and that the world is the basic reality has remained soaked over a long long time and cannot be got rid of by the casual reading and mere understanding of the truth the basic illusion can be effaced only by a long and unremitting practice of the bhavana that all this is i am brahman self everything is a concoction of time space and energy only and else is the trite talk of people who dislike the effort of sadhana which takes them to the self this talk is based on their dense ignorance of the self only by persistent practice 
and experience of sadhana can one arrive at the truth that all concepts of souls world and the cause thereof are just evanescent shadows on the screen of shiva self brahman there is never such a thing as conception of names and forms no such thing as the conceived mind no such thing as a person lost in samsara and no such things as the world and its creator everything that is seen to exist must be realized to be no other than the soul pure awareness being brahman self everything is sat chit ananda self only whatever is found to exist is sat existence only whatever is pleasurable is ananda bliss only one should ever abide firmly in the above bedrock of bhavana of sat chit ananda never for once should one slip even inadvertently into the disastrous bhavana that one is the body and that the world is real one should abide in the rock firm bhavana that everything is only brahman self and i am that brahman self by this bhavana all thought movements and the sins will disappear resulting in the eternal abidance in the soul sat chit ananda self by abiding in the self the wandering mind is reduced to perfect stillness after being freed from all the signs and thought currents it gets lost in the sat chit ananda self in the same way that water is lost when intimately mixed up with milk this unitary state of abidance in the self is called atmanishtha by the wise who have attained perfection sahaja nishtha or the natural state having realized that the world picture on the screen self is evanescent and essentially non-existent one should ever remain still and blissful in the firm conviction 
of ever being the soul brahman self only this conviction should be maintained even while functioning as an individual in the world of name and form this matured state of abidance in the self is called sahajanishta the natural state in that self wherein there is no action of body speech and mind no virtues or sinful karma action and the fruits thereof in that blissful state of self one should remain still assuming the least trace of thought in that self wherein there is neither conceiver nor conception of the world of names and forms one should remain blissfully still assuming the least trace of thought in that self wherein desire anger covetousness confusion bigotry and envy are all absent in that self wherein there is no thought of bondage or release one should abide blissfully still and showing the least ripple of thought firmly abiding in the self one acquires the totality of all knowledge and achieves the successful completion of all endeavors duties in that state one should abide blissful and still ensuring the least ripple of thought mind merged completely in the self one becomes a lord without rival steeped in bliss beyond compare in that state one should abide still free from the least trace of thought I am that self which is integral existence awareness bliss the soul imparted brahman self firm in the conviction born of this experience one should abide still free from the least trace of thought in the conviction that i am the self in which no thought ego desire mind or confusion can exist one should abide still free from trace of thought 
the firm faith of being the self is sufficient to dispel all thought and establish one in brahman self in due course of this practice even the thought involved in that faith fades away leading to spontaneous effulgence of the self if a person hearkens to this teaching and practices the faith even if he is a great sinner he is washed clean of all his sins and is established in brahman self